NHS. Richard Sloggett joins me to talk about this for a few minutes. Former Special Advisor to Health Secretary Matt Hancock and Senior Fellow uh, now at the Policy Exchanges Health and Social Care Unit. Richard, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Julia. Um, when you hear somebody say, please don't weaponise the NHS or don't make it too political, I mean, it's, it's impossible not to, isn't it? It's, it's possible not to weaponise it, but it's deeply political. I mean, I, I would totally agree with you. I think the NHS is a, is a deeply political uh, a political thing. I think where there is common ground between the parties is that both parties are going into this election uh, committing to spend uh, more money on, on health and social care services um, and actually trying to demonstrate their own support for them uh, through the sort of funding, funding mechanisms. I think there's also no doubt that at the moment that the NHS is under some pressure in terms of the services that it provides based on your analysis, which is, you know, an older an older population with with multi morbidities. Um, and as we move into a winter period, I think the sort of pressure on that system is only going to get uh, is only going to increase. Address some of the statements made, uh, arguments made about. Uh, privatisation of the NHS because to a lot of people when they hear that they think oh I'm going to have to pay at the door that's that's not what it means is it? No, and I, and I, and I think so. I think one of the things that's come out of this morning's conversations has been how the, the debate on the NHS needs to move in a different direction. It needs to move more to evidence rather than uh, political uh, being used as a political football. <laughs> Good luck with that, um, Richard. I try. <laughs> I'm going to try, but let's see how, far, how long that goes. Could you um, could you tell well, the prime I, minister as well? By the way, that would be good. Uh, yeah, forty uh, well, hospitals. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, 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 I won't get into that. But what, what, <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that, and I think what Chris Ops and the medical profession were talking about this morning, was what they were sort of dis discussing quite clearly was that there needs to be a real focus on actually what the pressures in the NHS are and what some of the solutions to those are. So if you take, I think, the number one issue that the NHS faces is staff. Um, where are we going to find uh, highly qualified medical professionals uh, in the future um, to look after our older older population? It is not a simple case of magicking them up overnight. We need a sort of long-term investment plan for staff. We also need a long-term investment plan for the NHS estate and redesigning that estate so that more patients can be cared for in, in different settings. And on social care, we need to see you know, proposals taken forward on, on what a, a sort of social care solution looks like. Well, so, and and social, on social care, it seems to me, I mean, I've entered that stage of life where my uh, parents are, are, are getting older or my, my uh, remaining parent is, is, is getting older and needing specific kinds of care and help. So you, you get new insights, don't you, when you reach that stage of life. And it seems to me that if, if the focus on providing good social care is all about health and social care, a, a point is being missed because social care is also about the environment around the house a person lives in, the actual house a person lives in, the availability of alternative housing for a person to live in, adaptations to, to houses, all kinds of things that aren't, strictly speaking, NHS stuff, are they? No, absolutely. I think this is what some people find confusing when they come um, into the situation you're finding yourself in, is that there is a myriad of op of options, but there's very the information is very fragmented for people to navigate the system, which mm. creates a lot of complexity, and also the access to services based on uh, eligibility and um, your own finances are key determinants of what care you can access. Now, policy exchange. One of the one of our proposals is to basically to bring the social care system much more closely into line with the NHS uh, system so that there is a much easier transfer between those two systems. Um, and one of the things that you find is that actually there are patients in the NHS who need to be moved out of the NHS into care settings for whom there are no spaces available due to capacity constraints mm -hmm. in the system. And that kind of connectivity between the two systems is, I think, something that we increasingly need to look to fix. And that's a policy discussion we should be having um, during this election. Well, you'll remember during the last election, um, the uh, so-called dementia tax um, uh, policy that was brought forward and then uh, quickly removed. Um, it, it has to be addressed again by all of the main part, well, all of the parties, but certainly the two main parties. Uh, it, 
broadly speaking, do you know what the, the what the <clears throat> thinking is? I know Damien Green for the Conservatives brought out a paper. He came in and talked to us about it. It seemed to have a lot of good eyes in, good ideas in it to me, as long as they could be funded. Yeah. Um, what, what are you hearing about broad spectrum policies on that? Because there will be sensitivity about it, given what happened last time, won't there? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think um, announcing new social care policy during an election campaign has been proven in 2010 and 2017 mm. to be not too politically expedient. In saying that, I think there is a real desire and a real need for greater clarity on what the future policy may indeed look like uh, and how uh, and how that will be developed does that need to be done in a more cooperative way rather than uh, you know to to go back to the point uh, that chris hobson made i mean it isn't isn't that almost like a kind of war footing strategy that's required uh, I mean, I, 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 I think on, on this one, I think I'm more positive that there will be progress. The reason I say that is because the Labour Party has come out with its um, own social care policy first. And as the opposition party, to put a marker in the ground, it now provides the government with a sort of test case for what they will come out and, um, and do with this particular area. So whereas in the past, what's happened is in 2010 and 2017, it was the government who came, uh, with the Labour government in 2010, and then the Conservative government in 2017 came out with the proposals which were then uh, attacked and subsequently shelved by the opposition. This time, you're in a slightly different environment where the Labour Party at its conference announced their policy of free personal care um, at a cost of about £6.5 billion. Pounds. Um, and now it's up to the Conservatives in, and the government as it is to respond to that through their through their manifestos. So I'm slightly more positive than I, w- than I would have been in the past when traditionally what's happened is government has come out with proposals that have then been uh, been subsequently shelved. So um, can I can I can I tell you something that happened on the day that was announced? It was I was on on air when that that uh, that policy announcement was made. The, the phone lines went bonkers in this room that I'm sitting in talking to you and it was Tory voter after Tory voter after Tory voter saying they can keep their hands off my home and yeah. and so it wasn't really the opposition that did the, the the bashing of that policy for you to be fair I mean sure they joined in at some point soon afterwards but my goodness me it really struck me that day I'll, I'll never forget it yes and I, and I think this is where the debate ends up, ends up going I mean from a from a policy exchange perspective, we are, our policy on social care reform is to provide it, like the NHS, free, free at the point of use. Um, and as I stated earlier, one of the advantages of that would be you would um, you would get away from issues such as having to sell your home to pay for care, which you've just described, but also you would bring the two systems much more closely together. And, and ultimately, what we should be say, seeing this as is a, is a sign of real success. I mean, we've had an NHS uh, publicly funded free at the point of use for over 70 years now. And one of the benefits of that has been improved life expectancy uh, and um, huge advances in medical care, which is keeping um, us living longer. And now the policy challenge is how do we ensure dignity in old age as a result yeah. of that? And um, yeah, our proposal hopefully would, uh, if the government took it forward, would enact that. Just finally and briefly, if you wouldn't mind, you, you obviously believe that the Conservatives are best placed to help the NHS um, into that phase. Why? Um, so, I mean, in my, in my policy, in my policy exchange role, one of the things I have to say is I am, I am, I have to say neutral during during an election campaign. Where what I think is positive about where the NHS is at, even though there are some challenges within it, is that um, the two main parties are entering this election period committed to continuing. Uh, the investment that's needed within within the system and is so desperately needed given the demand pressures that are that are seen. I don't want to get you sacked, but <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't officially start on Wednesday, Richard. If you want to say anything else, or do you, or do you want to leave it at that? You leave it at that. Yeah. Well, well, all I would say is that having having worked with the current with the current Secretary of State, I think uh, it's probably quite clear where my political okay. allegiance lies. <laughs> all right, we'll say no more. Thank you very much indeed. Really good <laughs> to talk you, to you. Then. Thank you, Richard Sloggett, former Special Advisor to the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, now Senior Fellow at the Policy Exchanges Health and Social Care Unit.